So what's next? Construction. We are in construction at Terminal A. Construction began uh, back in February, actually, with some early demo, has progressed on a, a rapid basis. Now we have uh, a third of Terminal A out of service and the entire Terminal A Section A garage out of service. And that work's already proceeding very nicely. Um, Terminal E will uh, begin here soon with a new infill construction, the, the B slash C infill, and the reactivation of the satellite terminal. That will create what we call the empty seat to allow us to move the air carriers around it at Terminal E so that we can uh, refurbish that terminal. And then Terminal B should start construction right after the first of the year. Uh, terminal C lags uh, after Terminal A completes. So when you look at the overall sequence of construction and the detailed schedules and, and we go in and try to project cost loadings and manpower loadings, we believe that we'll probably peak construction towards the end of next year. So we're, we're, we have a very rapid buildup and a crescendo and after the uh, end of next year, 2012, then the construction starts to fall off slightly over the next five years until we reach completion. Uh, Terminal A, this is the area that is under construction and um, the area in blue is what's currently being demolished and the walls, if you walked out to that area, you would see the wall follows the path of the, the dark line there where the boundary between the blue and the green areas are. Uh, still access to the APM stations and there will always be access to the Skylink APM stations at every phase of construction and trip. We, are, we will never take a station offline so that there's no access. There'll always be access from one side or another. So this is what it looked like when we started construction. Mobile partitions put up overnight to segregate the area that we wanted to pull, put into construction. And then uh, this was on the land side where the baggage claim hall is. Then the, uh, the hard walls were constructed to re behind those partitions over the course of about two weeks. Uh, they were painted, their flooring material, the signage, uh, so that they really blend in very nicely. And a matter of fact, it's really hard to tell that there's a third of that terminal that's really out of service behind that wall when you're on the, the passenger side, which is the way it should be. Um, behind that wall, this is what it looks like. We have demolition going on uh, daily. Uh, ceilings, air handler units, or, or HVAC uh, systems, um, the VAV boxes, electrical. A lot of these areas, floorings coming out, these areas are being gutted both in the ramp level and the concourse level. And those are all the construction slides I brought, but I think that gives you a sense of, of what's happening and where we're at um, and how quickly this program is moving. So again, I'll I'll stay for questions if you have any later, but I think it'd probably be better to move on and let Mark explain exactly what we're gonna have inside the concourse as, uh, as this program progresses. So, Mark Lobo with Corrigan. Thanks, Dwayne. Well, um, like Dwayne said, I get to show a lot of pretty pictures and now talk about the fun stuff. Uh, my name is Mark Lobel. I'm uh, with Corgan Architects, and we're part of a just vast design team working on the TRIP project. Uh, I'm also the liaison to concessions, and we've uh, worked very closely with concessions to redevelop the master plan. Um, so I, I'd like to kind of recap for a second, one of the things that Dwayne talked about, and TRIP stands for Terminal Redevelopment and Improvement Program. Um, but before that happened back in 2006, DFW initiated uh, a, a, a very ambitious remaster planning effort called uh, VFR 2030. And VFR stands for Vision of the Future Realized. And this was a, a really uh, very involved study. And out of that came uh, several things. Um, one was the uh, determination that 85% of the uh, 
building systems for all the terminals needed replacement. The second was we asked ourselves, well, what is a terminal going to be like in 20 years? We need to obviously improve the operations of the terminal, but then there was a mandate from DFW asking for a very timeless and modern uh, vision for the future, and the design team actually took that very seriously. So I'm going to talk for a minute about what we see as the future of the terminal. Um, this is how the terminal is expected to look. Um, in addition to um, completely revamping and providing new finishes for all of the surfaces, um, we we're looking to create more transparency in the terminal, improve wayfinding, uh, which all in all will improve the operations of the terminal. Uh, one of the key concepts that the design team developed, I believe I can use this as a pointer, is the idea of creating what we dubbed the artery wall. And this artery wall will run continuously around the per inside perimeter of the terminal. Not only the terminal, but every terminal. And what, what this will do is not only unify the entire airport visually, but it will unify the inside of the terminal. Um, the second concept that the design team developed was the idea of view pockets. Uh, currently, as everybody here, I think, is aware, there's very little height in the terminal. The concourse is 13 feet tall. So what we've done is developed a very tall view pocket that goes up to about 17.6. One of the things that this will allow a concessionaire to do is to extend their identity up much higher than they currently are now. Um, and this slide illustrates, oh, well, this slide illustrates how those view pockets will work. And in a minute, I'm going to kind of get into describing how the neutral frames will work with these view pockets. But currently, this is what the terminal looks like now, and what we're uh, calling the existing whale tail will go away and that will give rise to what we're calling um, the artery wall. And the concession spaces will all have a very, very minimal stainless steel neutral frame that will surround and frame those spaces. So the concessionaires will have uh, much more height uh, to create their, their identities, and we feel like that'll provide a very open, very bright, very clean aesthetic for the terminals going forward. This is another view of that. Now, we have three main design conditions in the terminal. Uh, the, there, there's an inline condition which runs the perimeter of the terminal and exists on both the inside face of the concourse and the exterior face of the concourse. Those inline locations are categorized with a single uh, neutral frame opening. The second type of condition is what we're calling the freestanding condition. And the majority of those conditions happen in the Skylink nodes and have two neutral frames, so the concession space appears to free float or be freestanding in the space. The last type is the corner conditions, and these are basically, there are very few of these, I believe there's two on air side and two on land side, and these have um, actually got two uh, inline openings. So to give you a look at each one of these conditions, these are the inline conditions. Uh, for this particular RFP, there are seven of these locations that are being offered. Um, and this is how they'll appear. Again, the neutral frame going up to 14 foot six in height. Uh, a lot of 
opportunity for a concessionaire to develop an identity within that zone. Um, another another uh, betterment that each concessionaire will have will be uh, a three by three blade sign in front of each one of these concession spaces. And we feel like because the terminal is very, uh, with the curve of the terminal, it presents some visual challenges to see around the, uh, the horseshoe. So we feel like this will, will help um, enhance the view to some of these concession spaces. Uh, another view um, with blade signs. Um, the second condition is the freestanding condition, which, as I said, are mainly in the Skylink areas. And there are currently two of these locations that are, are being offered as part of this RFP. Um, this is a, a, an example that I really like to use because it's a very well-developed concept um, here in, uh, on the north side of the Skylink, but this will illustrate for you how these uh, standalone concessions will work. They'll have multiple openings and they'll sit adjacent to what we call the, the uh, mechanical wedges. So all of the seating, these areas will be delineated by an arc of seating around. Uh, and they should be very nice. They'll have a lot of visual impact. This is a view looking down the concourse, uh, down the uh, corridor leading from the concourse to the Skylink elevators. And again, these, these locations will also have blade signs. So we feel like this will, uh, there will be a lot of lively, good uh, modern look to the new program. This is the corner conditions um, and as I said before there's two of these on land side and two on air side. Blade sign on these as well so all of the concessions will have the same uh, blade sign. That's a, an example of a corner location. And then we get to the concessions guidelines. And the, the purpose of the guideline is to really get potential tenants very familiar with the existing conditions within the terminal, um, how to design their space, um, and um, various, uh, various design elements that are occurring in the space existing. Um, the contents are a description of each um, concession space type, um, construction standards for all the retail operations, and then we give a list of the responsibilities and procedures to be followed. And I'm not going to go through this list, but it's all very well delineated in this book. Uh, then what will the shell spaces look like? Well, they're going to be um, they're basically going to be a raw, unfinished uh, type of retail space. They'll be open to the ceiling. Uh, on the interior of the space, you'll have exposed metal framing. Uh, all of the utilities will be brought to the lease line. Um, and um, the guideline can be found on the DFW website at... DFW concessions.